Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist and I've been working on making more assets. So today I'm just going to do some more quick tips and tricks about um, some techniques that I particularly liked that I either used or discovered while making these. So these assets here are all lamps and they're all made out of cylindric parts and I came up with a super fast way for making those so I, so I wanted to show that technique and just make one of these lamps. So I've just got a reference here for some old lamps and a grease pencil stroke. So I'm going to go and edit on the grease pencil stroke and just delete it. So I can go into draw mode. And then I'm just going to copy the silhouette of this lamp, all the parts I want to use. Once I've traced all the parts I want, I'll just go back to object mode and convert it to a curve. Convert it to a polygon curve which makes a copy of it, so then we can delete the grease pencil objects and just use the curve. Now one thing, you can also draw curves in edit mode. The problem with the draw curve tool is there's no easy way to control the resolution of the curve that you get, because this error value resets with every, I could set it to one, and then draw a new curve and it resets every time. So, um, so the cool thing about the grease pencil stroke is you can play with the spacing of the points and the smoothing to um, get a result you like. Then I'm just going to add a spin, a screw modifier to it. And then we need to edit the origin point. Like so. Now once we've done that, um, some of this doesn't need to be in the screw modifier. So we'll take out these parts that should be regular splines. I think just those were. And here we can clean this up a bit. And then on these parts here, we can get rid of the screw modifier. Join these together and then just give it some bevel. Play with the radius. I'm just cleaning up the shape a bit, Everything trying to even out the spacing, smooth out some of the curves. This part here that you can't see, we can get rid of. Once I have something I like for that, you can just add an array modifier to these loose parts. So just drag in array one dimensional. Set the offset to zero and then pick a rotation. So we could do like 120 for three. We can set materials on this. So I have a modifier for setting a material. So here I'm just separating all the different parts and selecting the right material for each part. Once I have, with the material set too, we can just select all of this and make sure merge is on. And then if you check the stretch UVs V, it seems to, for what I'm doing anyway, it gets better results. Once I have that, the lamp's basically done. You can move it back over with the rest. Once I have it over here, you just have to scale it to be the right size. Then once it's here, one last thing I want to do is just make sure that I apply the scale because I want to make sure that this version of it is with the mesh scaled to one. And that's how I made all of these lamps. For these simple ones, it takes maybe five minutes at most to make one. For some of these more complicated ones, I think it, like this one, I think took me 10 minutes. So it's pretty fast and I'm pretty happy with that workflow. The other thing I've been working on is modeling some drapes, which has been going pretty good, although, um, Drapes are a kind of a pain because cloth's always kind of a pain. But I think the result came out okay and I'm pretty happy with it. So I thought I'd finish this drape here and show some of my tricks for working with and modeling with uh, cloth physics. So here you can see I've got a reference that I'm trying to sort of follow. First thing about cloth is it's a lot easier if you break it up into smaller pieces and get that one piece right and then freeze it and then work on the next part. Technically, the, all of this fabric here is probably one piece, 
but trying to model it all in that one piece is just unnecessarily difficult. So we're going to break it up into parts. You have this part here, which is sort of the main body of the curtain. There's this part here, which is sort of the fringe detail. And then there's this part here, which is like the trailing part or what sits on the floor. So we'll make each of those three parts separately. I have the three parts prepared because I already made the one side and I just copied them over. So all of these are just subdivided planes that I've taken the corners of and tweaked with proportional editing. They all have a cloth simulation on them. And if we go to the properties, um, I just played with the settings till I found something I liked. One thing I'd recommend if you're just trying to get a still shot is turn the speed multiplier up. Um, I set it to three. I think you can probably go too high to where it like messes up the simulation. I don't know. I haven't tried going super high. But if you set it higher, then um, the cloth will settle faster because you're like fast forwarding time essentially. And, um, and since all I care about is the shape of it once it's settled, and then I'm going to freeze it there, that'll make the baking faster. Um, by default, the bending model is angular. I often will switch it to linear because it makes everything a little bit softer maybe or something. And then as far as the overall look of it goes, the bending stiffness value has the largest impact on the appearance of it. If you turn the bending stiffness lower, then you'll get finer wrinkles and stuff. Um, other than that, um, I turned off object collisions because this doesn't have object collisions. This bottom piece does have object collisions because it collides with the floor. But I turned on self collisions because with the cloth hanging like this, it would look really bad if it was allowed to pass through itself. And then uh, I just turned the friction all the way down on that and set the distance pretty small. Other than that, um, in shape, you need to make sure that it has a pin's vertex group. So then what we're going to do is we're going to control the shape of the cloth by animating the pinned vertexes. And we can do that with shape keys. So we can just move this over here. Now you can see in the mesh data that there's some shape keys. There's two of them. The one is the sort of the resting initial position of the cloth. And then the second one alters the pinned vertices to position them where I want them in the final pose of the cloth. And then I animate between those keys over the first 30 frames. So you can see you just sort of get stretched and distorted weird. But then if you run that with the cloth simulation, the cloth physics will try to maintain the shape and the size of the mesh as those pinned vertices are being distorted, which allows you to sort of pose the cloth. Another thing you should do is uncheck the relative checkbox to make these absolute keyframes so that it's possible to edit the basis key and adjust the size of the cloth after you've already positioned the pinned vertices where you want them. So because this is backward, the first thing we need to do is just scale it, flip it on the x-axis, position it here. I already know it's the right size. Um, because I figured it out for the other side, but just to demonstrate that, I'll just make it way too small initially. Then in the second shape key, what you want to do is find your pinned vertices. It should be all of these. You want to take those pinned vertices and just position them where they should be once the cloth is in its resting position. So they should be up here, and these should be sort of here. And as far as how to shape those, I just took the vertices and scaled them down and then used proportional editing to sort of make them circular because I, what I'd like if possible is for the edges of the cloth to sort of wrap around so I get a more three-dimensional look and not a paper thin face. So I made, so I made the ends kind of circular. So then if we play this, you can see that it animates between the shape keys. So all we have to do now is turn the cloth simulation back on and run playback on the scene and it will simulate the cloth physics. Uh, it's not going to look very good because I made it too small. But So then after simulating a bit, it's, there's a good chance you'll notice that you're, there's something wrong about your cloth shape. So in this case, like this edge is too straight. It's not loose enough. We need more fabric on that edge. So then what you can do is you can go in So then what you can do is you can go into your shape keys to the basis, select all of this, and you can and you can go in and you can make this edge longer or pull out this like this or something. Or in this case, I just know I scale it by half, so we'll scale it by two to make it bigger. And because the shape keys are absolute, it didn't have any effect on this key, so everything's still positioned correctly. But we've added more cloth so we can get wrinkles and stuff. So we'll play this back again.
And once it's baked, you can play it back and just make sure that everything looks okay. There's no weird wrinkles you don't like. If there are, usually just moving it slightly to a different position or... Um, like one thing that can happen a lot is if you get it, if you started the mesh too far away, then it gets pulled really fast in this direction, and you get this big swing, which is bad. So then just moving it closer to its final position would help. Or, um, but, or another thing in this case is I know I can adjust this later, so you can see this angled at this backwards angle, which helps this front part have this nice curve to it because gravity is helping make that shape. So in that case I made the shape of the wrinkles something I liked better by adjusting the pinned vertices here backwards a little bit. Anyway, once we have this and I'm happy with the shape, which I think I am, go back to the cloth modifier, save it as a shape key, then go back to the first frame of the animation so you can duplicate it faster, hide the duplicate, you can just turn off the cloth simulation then and move this over because they might use it again later. And when we unhide the copy, we can get rid of the cloth simulation, go back to the mesh data, delete the basis and the key first, so then all that's left is the saved cloth result, get rid of all the shape keys. Then we can go back to the modifiers, add a multi-resolution modifier. Because these were all made from subdivided planes, I can decrease the resolution as much as I want. So we just go to the multi-res modifier and unsubdivide twice, which is the resolution I have on the rest of this. Then it's just a matter of fixing any little problems, like at the top here, this is too far forward. So we can just select this, turn proportional editing on. Sharp works best for this. Um, if you use the smooth, you get this weird S-curve that doesn't look like cloth. But if you use sharp, um, the curves you get from moving it look much more natural. So then we just have to pull this back a tiny bit so that it's not visible from the front. And we can tweak that more later. You could come here if you wanted to get more of this fullness. You can pull it, massage it around a little bit to get a shape that you like. You can go in sculpt mode too and use the relax on it if you have weird... Sometimes it gets these, you can kind of see it here, these sharp sort of diagonal faces, um, and sometimes using relax can help smooth those out a bit. Then it's just a matter of repeating that process for the other parts, so let's continue with this piece. So we're going to turn the cloth simulation back on, get rid of the cloth from the last, from the other side. Then in the basis we need to flip it on the x-axis. Then in the shape key we need to flip that on the x-axis. Then um, we can position it closer to where it needs to go. It should start about here. Now in this one the bottom's not pinned because it drags on the ground, so all you have to do here is select this loop at the top and place it, I don't know, about here. Then we go to the beginning of our timeline, run playback. This one simulates a lot faster. Now in this case I don't really like it, The um, this bit here looks bad in my opinion. So I'm going to go to the basis key, move everything this way a little bit, so that it drags on the ground a bit more. Now the risk with this is that I get too much velocity and it like swings out this way, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, it kind of swings too much. So. Another way around that is you can just drag the key out so that it takes longer to get to that position. I think that's going to be pretty good. So again, we're going to go to modifiers, we're going to save a shape key, we can turn off the cloth simulation, make a copy of it, hide the copy, move this to the side, get rid of the cloth simulation, get rid of the shape keys, and we can tweak the mesh. So in this case it needs to come forward a little bit. Just make sure this is behind so we don't have any clipping issues. Check if we want to do anything here. We can maybe pull this around a bit. All right, so then we can just add a multi-resolution modifier on some divide twice. And that's our 
ends. So now I just have this sort of detailed fringed bit that hangs down, um, and that's this piece. So we'll turn the cloth simulation on on that, go to the mesh data, get rid of the old cloth that I saved, go to the basis, flip it on the x-axis, go to the second shape key, flip it on the x-axis. This one I actually made with a curve modifier because I wanted this really zigzaggy shape to it. Then we can just move it over to about here. And then in the our shape key, we just have to line everything up so we can place this here. And again, this all hangs freely. So, so after that, we're done and we can just run the simulation. Once you get to a shape you're happy with, go back to the modifier, save it as a shape key, turn off the class simulation, make a copy of it, hide the copy, move that out of the way, get rid of the class simulation on the copy, get rid of the shape keys on the copy, back to modifiers, add a multi-resolution, unsubdivide it twice, in edit mode, use proportional editing to line everything up how you want it. Once you have something you're happy with, you should check the face orientation. On all of these red ones, you can just do flip normals. Then, um, that done, we just need to set the materials. Let's go back to shaded. You can just select these and link this material. Now, if everything worked right, these should already just have a UV map from the original plane. Oh, now you can see on this one, somehow the UVs did get messed up. So we'll just unwrap that again. So then the only other thing was this sort of fringe piece. And the way I made that is I just went into edit mode on this piece, selected the bottom edge, turned correct face attributes on, and extruded it down. About so far. And then I just separated that into its own mesh and gave it the right material. And then I added a little bit of shape to it, but that's kind of optional. And then it's just a matter of making sure the UVs are right, so I unwrapped it, rotated at 90 degrees. Here you can see too a case of reusing textures. This is like a weird striped stone texture, but this, that stripe pattern was the main thing I was looking for, so it, so it actually works pretty good for making this sort of fringe looking detail. So now I just want to make sure that the scale on this is similar to the other parts, so we'll just scale it down until it looks like they're the same size. And then I feel like this is too is longer than the other one, so I'm just going to make it slightly shorter. And so there you go, that's how you can model cloth with shape keys and cloth simulation. Alright, so that's all I've got for this one. Hopefully there's a tip or trick in there somewhere that you didn't know about, and um, thanks for watching.